Hi guys, welcome back to Chamber of Chess. Today I'm showing you another game from Chesscom. It was nice since uh, it had a pretty interesting opening development, went to middle game, and finally I won in the end game. But let's do it step by step. We got uh, English opening. I think it's called symmetrical variation. E5 is possible, and after this, d6, which gives it uh, like similarity with the Sicilian variation. One of those same variations. Knight c6. g6, maybe premature. We could have played e6. Yeah, something like that. But g6 is fine. So, not so bad. Okay. Now, gradually, white keeps um, pushing and gets advantage in space. Yeah, this move was actually useless. I really should have gone for, uh, like I told you, when you have, when you have advantage, you want to keep your pieces. When you're at disadvantage, you want to trade. So right here, this would be most logical continuation. And let's say... Uh, Bishop d7 is possible, or um, something else, for example, knight h5, if you want to go for a trade. Castle. Now, this move is really bad. It's really bad because I'm just allowing white to get the initiative. Again, I should have gone for something else. For example, uh, engine is uh, really pushing this knight h5. Maybe he really wants to do this total trade on d4 and bring the knight back. But here we suddenly get under attack, which is pretty unpleasant for me. Okay, so queen d2, b6. Now it's very bad. Rook c1. Trade at last. Like I said, really a strategic mistake. Rook fd1, b3. You see how white really is not doing anything radically, but he's just improving his position. And right here, knight e5, and suddenly my bishop is a very best place. There is nowhere I can go, because here is just work. So I really should take here with a pawn and give this one up. Using my two bishops, hope for a draw. But knight e5 is just trading, and it's really good for me. Because it releases the pressure. Trade, exactly. Uh, since I'm trading, he really wanted to do it himself. So just capture it first, and put the queen in the active spot. d4 or c3. Maybe c3 is better, potentially, to get the file to himself. And any trade would be good for him. C5, yeah, it's good. I really don't want to don't wanna be the one trading because then white gets the file. So, and here, again, I don't want to be the one trading. Although it's not losing, but it's still unpleasant for me, slightly. Rook C5. Now, this move gives me the edge because now suddenly it turns out that bishop has nowhere to go and in case of rook c1 it's just rook c8 and the bishop is gone he has to take now i got an open file although i have a double pawns but i'm just attacking and he went rook a1. I was actually considering, yeah, and it's way better, rook f2, because here rook still has some potential. Mm, rook a4, rook b2. His rook is passive. My rook is attacking both pawns, and I should just improve my king. Suddenly, it turns out that all black squares are potentially under my control. Rook a3, that's how it happened. 
the end game is clearly better for me. I could have just gone with king f6, king d5, you know, it's easy. But I thought g5 to make sure his pawn is not pushing is really good, and that's good actually. I go for a trade now because it's pretty obvious that my king is going to be more active, and that's really important in pawn end games. e6. So I'm not going with this move because it really doesn't give me much right here, but e6 eventually forces him to trade, and then I play d5 and I get a pass pawn. He didn't trade, in which case he just lost the pawn. And again, I'm promoting, he cannot stop me. That's it, guys. Subscribe, like, let me know what you think. Let me know if you want to have our first free class or have any questions. We'll be waiting. See you next time.